people are becoming more and more anxious. More than a third of us feel the world is a more frightening place than it used to be. By age 32, 50% of the population might qualify for an anxiety disorder. I'm a 40-year-old man in a 12-year-old body. One of my friends said, for people like you, we used to pour buckets of cold water on them as they lay in bed. That's what you deserve. If they can fix their anxiety with a pill, that's just as appealing as discovering that you can make your dinner with a microwave oven. The country is bathing itself in prescribed drugs. Well, there are many, many unhappy people out there in the real world. They don't all have psychiatric illnesses. The ultimate risk you now is that we've psychiatrized the entire population. We've ended up in a situation where virtually everybody has some kind of disorder. That's crazy. It felt like there was this volcano of panic juice coming from the stomach and then into the rest of me. It kind of feels like something's always chasing you, that you are always trying to get away or always trying to get somewhere. There's something always right behind you, coming for you. It's not a productive fear. It's more of a um, paralyzing fear. Well, th there's just everyday anxiety. Missing the subway when you're late for work. Trying to get to an appointment and you can't find a cab. It's just the city is fraught with it. We can't take a brain picture and we have no blood test to tell us, oh yes, this is anxiety. We depend entirely on patients telling us how they're feeling. Because we expect to be more happy and fulfilled than the average human life is going to be, um, we start to become open to the idea that our unhappiness is somehow pathological or, or a disorder and that it deserves to be treated. And that's a, a real modern phenomenon to take the complexity and enormity of human emotion and turn it into a, a treatable illness. It's like I can't participate in life. I'm too busy worrying. I don't sleep at night. Paxil works to correct this imbalance to relieve anxiety. I think what's happened over the course of the last 30 years is a kind of perfect storm in psych psychiatric diagnosis. The most common symptoms include rapid heartbeat, trembling, sweating, Muscles, People have to understand stomach. that these diagnoses that one hears on every street corner are diagnoses that are being marketed for commercial profit. They don't necessarily correspond at all to what your underlying problem is. There's a new proposal for a diagnosis of mixed anxiety depression that would be, I think, very much equivalent to the everyday worries, uh, tensions, stresses, problems that all people have. And this is likely to become, from nowhere, the most common diagnosis in psychiatry. My wife died on March 6th of this year, okay? I had a grief experience after that. The symptoms I had couldn't sleep, didn't want to eat, felt a lack of energy, sad. Those are the symptoms of depression. Now, it used to be that we said that after a year of grief, if you still had those symptoms, then you had uh, a depression, not grief. What do we say now? We say if after two weeks of the death of a spouse, a child, or a parent, if you still have those symptoms, you can be diagnosed as having depressive disorder.